Okay, good morning class and welcome to Mr. Shua's Guide to Passing the Algebra 1 SOL. As you know, the SOL, the Standards of Learning Test, is coming up in the state of Virginia in the next few weeks. And the Virginia Department of Education has released this test item set as a guide to help you uh, to uh, be successful with this test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each question on this test item set show you how you can answer these questions and hopefully this is going to help you to pass or maybe even pass advance the algebra one SOL if you're taking it okay and uh, now the way that I show you how to answer these questions here is the way that I feel is most efficient and expedient your teachers may have shown you other ways to answer these questions there's usually more than one way to answer a math problem so if you're more comfortable with using the method that your teacher showed you by all means go ahead and use that method I'm just using the ways that I think are the most efficient so enough talk let's get into it here so let's look at this sample question okay what is the solution to three times 2x minus 1 equals 3. Well, we take that question, and if we distribute the 3 to the parentheses, we're going to get 6x minus 3 equals 3. Then all we need to do is just add 3 to both sides of the equation. We're going to get 6x equals 6. We divide by 6 on both sides. x equals 1, which is answer choice C. Okay, that one was pretty easy. Let's go to the next sample question. Okay, let's see. Directions. Type your answer in the box. Your answer must be in the form of a fraction in the simplest form. Use a slash for the fraction bar. So, what is the value of 3 divided by x plus 2 when x equals 4? Your answer must be in the form of a fraction in the simplest form. Okay, so the original equation is 3 or expression 3 divided by x plus 2, x equals 4. So, I'm going to substitute 4 for the x. So, that's going to be just 3 divided by 4 plus 2, which equals 3 divided by 6, and 3 divided by 6 simplifies to be 1 half. So you would just type 1 half, 1 slash 2 in the answer box, okay? Pretty simple so far. Let's look at question 1. Which expression represents 4 less than half a number n? Well, 4 less than something, that's just minus 4, because whatever the something is, you subtract 4 here, and it's going to be 4 less than it. Now it says here, then, half a number one half a number so we put them both together one half a number minus four or four less than half a number which is answer choice b okay makes sense let's go on to question two which of the following binomials is a factor of x squared minus x minus six well here we have a trinomial mean coefficient is one in that case, we're going to look for two numbers that when we add them, they add to negative 1. And when we multiply them, they multiply to negative 6. Now, I listed the factors of 6 on the right here, which are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. And the factors that seem to meet our criteria are the 3 and the 2. So I will break this down as x minus 3 times x plus 2. Because negative 3 and positive 2 add up to negative 1. At the same time, negative 3 times positive 2 gives me a negative 6. So these are my two factors, and then I look at my answer choices. x minus 3 matches one of the factors in my answer choices, so choice C is our answer. Okay, let's go on to question 3. Identify each expression that is in simplest radical form. Okay, well, just jumping to the middle here for a moment. 64 is from radical x. You can't get any simpler than that. So that is in its simplest radical form. And in the middle here, 7x squared y times radical 2xy. Radical 2xy cannot be simplified any further. So that's also in its simplest radical form. Now let's go to the first one, x times radical 50y. Well, radical 50y can be broken down. The radical 50y, I would break down, as I tell my students to take two numbers that multiply to the 50, one of the numbers should be a perfect square. And in this case, it would be 25 and 2. So I break down the 50y as radical 25 times radical 2y. Because radical 25 is a perfect square, but the 2y isn't. And radical 25 is just simply 5, so that's x times 5, is just simply 5x. And since the 2y can't break down any further, you just put it next to it, 
5x radical 2y. Here, on the last side, radical 12, x cubed y to the fourth. Well, that can be broken down. The radical 12, x cubed y to the fourth, again, breaking it into two separate radicals, I would put 4x squared y fourth under my first radical because all of these are perfect squares. The only thing that's not a perfect square is the 3x because here, radical 4x squared y fourth, well, the square root of 4 is 2, square root of x squared is x, the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. The radical 3x doesn't break down any further, so I just bring it over. So, basically answering this question, because these two can be simplified further, they do not match. These two are already in simplest form, so that's the answer. Okay, let's go on to question four. Which expression is equivalent to one-sixth times 30x minus 24y minus one-eighth times 32x minus 16y? Well, what I would do first is take one-sixth and multiply it by this parentheses. One-sixth times 30x would be basically 30 over 6x, or just simply 5x. One-sixth times 24y would be 24 over 6y, or just 4y. So this simplifies to be 5x minus 4y. The second one here, one-eighth times 32x is just 32 over 8x, or just simply 4x. 16y times 1 8 is just 16 8 over y, or just 2y. So basically here we have 5x minus 4y minus 4x minus 2y. Now, we're going to treat this subtraction sign as a negative 1 and distribute it to our parentheses here. So what we get is 5x minus 4y minus 4x plus 2y. Then all we do is combine our like terms. 5x minus 4x is just x. Negative 4y plus 2y is negative 2y, which is answer choice B right here. Okay? Let's move on to question 5. Which is equivalent to the cubed root of 48 in simplest form? So the cube root of 48, as I teach my students, is to break the 48 down into two separate radicals. Everything that will be a perfect cube is under your first radical. Everything not a perfect cube under your second radical. So in this case, I would break down radical 48 as radical 8 times radical 6. Because 8 times 6 is 48, but 8 is a perfect cube. And the cube root of 8 is just simply 2, since radical or the cube root, I should say, of 6 can't be simplified any further. I would just bring it over. So the cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 6, we just bring it over 2. Cube root of 6, which is answer choice A. Okay, let's move on here. What is the value of radical 128 in the simplest radical form? Again, what I would do is find two numbers that multiply to 128 and break it into two separate radicals. I would take 128 and break it down as radical 64 times radical 2. Because 64 times 2 is 128, and 64 is a perfect square. The square root of 64 is just 8. And then the radical 2 can't be simplified any further, so I just bring it over. 8 radical 2. That matches answer choice A. Okay, let's move on to question seven. Which polynomial is equivalent to this expression if n is not equal to negative one? Okay, so I've rewritten the expression here. I want you to pay attention to the steps that I take in order to find my answer. Now, the numerator is currently written as 3 plus n minus 2n squared. First step I'm going to do is rewrite the numerator in standard form. So it will be negative 2n squared plus n plus 3. That's in standard form with highest exponent first. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the numerator. If I factor a negative 1, that's going to give me a positive 2n squared minus n minus 3. And, okay, do you see how I got that here? Now, this 2n squared minus n minus 3, that factors to be two binomials. 
And that would factor to be n plus 1 times 2n minus 3. If you FOIL these two, it will give you these two back. So right now, my numerator is negative n plus 1 times 2n minus 3. Now, what do we notice here? We have an n plus 1 in the numerator, n plus 1 in the denominator. I can cancel those out. So now I have my negative and my 2n minus 3 left because there's nothing left in the numerator, just 1. So I have negative times 2n minus 3. Now, if I take this negative, treat it as a negative 1, distribute it to the parentheses, that's going to be a minus 2n and a positive 3, or 3 minus 2n, which is choice B here. Okay? Now, please pay attention to those steps. If uh, I lost you there somewhere, just look at this part again, but it's really simple to get this answer. Okay? Let's move on to question 8 which is a factor of 2n squared minus 5n minus 42. There are several ways you can factor this. Uh, one of the ways that I tell my students to factor this is that here's a trinomial, the coefficient is larger than 1. So I tell them that the first two numbers here and here are going to be factors of whatever this coefficient is. Since this coefficient is a 2, so it's just 2 and 1. So just 2n and n. That's going to give you your 2n squared. Now, these last two numbers here are going to be factors of the 42. So I broke down the factors of 42 here, and then it looks like 7 and 6 will meet my criteria. So if I plug in 2n, 2n plus 7 times n minus 6, now to be sure that this is correct, I can just factor it. 2n times n is 2n squared. 2n times negative 6 is negative 12n. 7 times n is plus 7n, negative 12n plus 7n is negative 5n, positive 7 times negative 6 is negative 42. So this is a proper factoring. Now I look at my answer choices, n minus 6 matches one of the factors that I got, so choice D would be correct here. Okay, let's look at question 9. Which of the following is equivalent to a to the 12th b squared divided by a cubed b to the 6th. So I'm just going to use laws of exponents here. a to the 12th divided by a cubed. Let's just take that part there. Using laws of exponents, that would just simply be a to the 12 minus 3. And then here, b squared divided by b to the 6th because we subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator, that's just b to the 2 minus 6. So a to the 12 minus 3 would give me a to the 9th. b to the 2 minus 6 would give me b to the negative 4. And with negative exponents, in order to make them positive, if your negative exponent is in the numerator, you move it to the denominator. So the a to the 9th is positive. It remains in the numerator. b to the 4th is negative. We move it to the denominator so it becomes positive. So a final result is a to the 9th over b to the 4th, which matches answer choice A. All right, let's move on to number 10. What is the value of this expression when n equals negative 15? Okay, so we have negative 2 times the absolute value of n plus 6, and n is negative 15. So I'm just going to substitute negative 15 in for n. So negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 15 plus 6. Well, negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9, so that's just negative 2 times negative 9, but it's the absolute value of negative 9 which is just 9. So it's just negative 2 times 9, which is negative 18, which is answer choice B. Okay? Let's move on to question 11. Which graph best represents the equation 4x plus 5y equals negative 20? Okay, so we have 4x, so this is basically uh, standard form ax plus by equals c, we want to change this into a slope intercept form, and then that's going to help us. Now, I've rewritten the equation over here, 4x plus 5y equals negative 20. If I subtract 4x, both sides of the equation, I have 5y on this side of the equation. Here, I'm going to have negative 4x minus 20. 
I want to get the y by itself. I'm going to divide by 5 for everything here. When I do that, I get y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 4. Now, the minus 4, that's going to be my y-intercept, which means the graph is going to cross at negative 4. There's only two graphs here which cross at negative 4, a and b. Then next, I'm going to look at my slope. The slope here is negative 4 fifths, so go down 4, right 5. So from here, if I count, down 1, 2, 3, 4, right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the slope, and it's at 4. A is my choice. The other thing is recognizing that this is a negative slope, and a negative slope always points downward, this way. These are positive slopes that go up. So A is our choice here, okay? Let's go on to question 12. A formula to find the angle measures of an isosceles triangle is shown. 180 equals 2x plus y. Which equation can be used to find x? So they just want you to get the x by itself. Okay, so I've rewritten the equation here. 180 equals 2x plus y. Now, if I subtract y, both sides of the equation, I'm going to have 180 minus y here, I'm going to have 2x over here. Then, just to get the x by itself, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So the x by itself is just 180 minus y divided by 2, which matches answer choice A. Okay, you should see a lot of these are fairly simple to answer if you just remember a few basic algebraic steps. Okay, let's go on to question 13. Which equation represents the line that passes through the points negative 4, 4, and 8, negative 2? Okay, so I've rewritten those points here. I'm going to use the slope formula to determine what my slope is. Slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And, of course, this is my x1, my y1. This is my x2 and my y2. So... My slope is negative 2, which is my y2, minus my y1 of 4, divided by my x2 of 8, minus my x1, 8 minus negative 4. And negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 8 minus negative 4 is just simply 8 plus 4, 12. So I have my slope negative 6 over 12, which is just negative 1 half. So I know that's my slope. Now, I'm going to use slope-intercept form. I know what my m is, my slope. I know what my y and my x are because I'm just going to take one of these points. I'm just going to take the first point, plug it in for my x and my y, and then I just need to figure out my b. And when I have my b, I'll have the whole formula. So y equals mx plus b. y is 4, positive 4, equals my m of negative 1 half times my x, which is negative 4, plus b. Again, filling in my x, my y, and my m that I have to find out what my b is. So, 4 equals, now negative 1 half times negative 4 is basically positive 4 halves, or just 2. So, 4 equals 2 plus b. To get the b by itself, subtract 2 on both sides, so 2 equals b. So now I know what my b, or my y-intercept is. I'm just going to put it together in the slope-intercept form. y equals my m of negative 1 half x plus 2b that I found. y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. That matches my choice c. There we go. Okay, let's go on to question 14.